Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm out in the garage uh, trying to diagnose an issue I've been having with my 08335i with the N54 motor. Um, for the last uh, couple weeks or so, um, I've been having a bit of a stumble uh, or a hesitation at around 2000 RPM to about 4000 RPM. And I think this is a common issue and one of the first things to happen to a 335i. Um, I've already dealt with my low pressure fuel pump due to long cranks as well as the actual fuel pump module. Um, those are both causing it to have a relatively long crank time. When I first got this car, I did my fuel injectors actually. I uh, changed all six because the car was really hard to start. I'd get random misfires and uh, it just felt pretty crappy and it was one of the first things I did. I fixed them on the cheap for about 125 bucks and they have 40,000 miles on them since I put them in. But if you had to ask me, I don't think those are the issue at this point. Another major problem you'd have with your fuel injectors would be when you let the car sit overnight, it would drip fuel onto the pistons and then when you started it, it would run rough for a little bit. That was one of the first things I noticed when I got this car. That's why I went after the injectors as well as misfires, etc. So in terms of fueling on a 335i, you know, this is one of the major things that would scare people away from buying one of these cars. Um, I can tell that the high pressure fuel pump has been changed, um, probably under the recall. And my low pressure fuel pump doesn't appear to have been changed actually. Because uh, I was in there when I was doing my uh, fuel pressure regulator connecting to it. And it didn't look like it was ever replaced. So. I'm going to try to diagnose this and I figured I'd bring you guys along the, for the ride just to see how I figured things out and what determinations we make and what parts actually rectify the problem because this is probably one of the main things that happens to 335 eyes. On my car, um, the hesitation comes at around 2000 RPM to about 4000. Let's say you're just, you leave it in second gear and you're just trying to pick up relatively quickly while you're already rolling. Um, you'll find that it, you know, it will accelerate through it. It just feels a little slower and feels like it's hesitating slightly. From what I've read, the low pressure fuel pump contributes quite a bit at that RPM. Um, but the high pressure fuel pump kind of takes over because you have enough RPMs going from the motor. It's a mechanical style of pump and it can actually pull in fuel and take care of um, actually supplying enough fuel to the engine at high RPMs. Um, or what I found out is uh, the low pressure fuel sensor is another common problem on these cars. It lives underneath the intake manifold and that can fail over time as well. And one or the other can cause this issue where you have a hesitation. If you punch it in first gear from a stop, you'll rip through first gear relatively quickly. You fly right through that RPM spot and even into second gear, it feels normal. Um, but it's only because you're just you're accelerating way past uh, that uh, point. You're 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 only in that RPM band for a limited period of time. So if you have a failing low pressure fuel pump um, down low, it doesn't matter so much because it's able to supply enough fuel to the motor, and uh, the high pressure fuel pump um, is gets enough supply to actually build up the pressure. Um, but where it's pivotal is you're rolling you know, maybe 50% throttle, asking for a little more, punching it at a certain RPM, and there's a starvation point where the low pressure fuel pump's not giving enough fuel to the high pressure fuel pump, and uh, only once you get higher up in the RPM band does the high pressure fuel pump have enough mechanical momentum to generate enough PSI naturally because it's bolted to the motor, and it gets around the issue. That, at least that's what I found in theory. I found a couple things online where the BMW techs say that the low pressure fuel pump uh, is important at, at uh, two to four thousand RPM, fifty percent plus throttle. It's it needs to be healthy, or the fuel pressure sensor, low pressure fuel pressure sensor on the actual fuel rail underneath your intake manifold could be failing, and um, we're we're going to try to diagnose that today since. I've covered the majority of the fueling issues that can happen on a 335i on this channel. I figured let's go in detail here. If you guys are having issues, 
you can use this one video to kind of figure out where the feeling issue lies on your 335i. So I'm going to summarize real quick here and you'll find videos on my channel for the majority of the stuff. The fuel pressure regulator lives on the driver's side underneath the rear seat and it can contribute to really long cranks when you're trying to start your car um, in the morning. Your starter's going for 10-15 seconds before it's able to build up fuel pressure because as it sits it leaks down. Next would be um, if you're having random misfires or hesitations throughout the rev band and you're also um, having it where when you start the car in the morning after letting it sit for a while or even just parked for a couple hours if it runs really rough until it clears out excess fuel your fuel injectors could be leaking and dripping onto the pistons so fuel injectors would be misfires rough running when you start it uh, long cranks would be fuel pressure regulator or your actual uh, fuel pump control module which is on the passenger side bolted right by the quarter panel. I have a video on that as well where I upgraded to a newer generation. Now I've covered that. I don't have any long cranks. I can give you an idea here. The car's been sitting all, all night. And let's start it up. Right? That was the first start after sitting all night. And the way it idles and whatnot is relatively good. I don't suspect my fuel injectors because before, even when I first got the car, it didn't have a very long crank. But when it started, it would just be really rough. After even a hot, a hot restart would be a mess. It would just be all choppy. And when I started it, it would have like struggled and stayed at low RPMs, like five, 600 RPM really really rough and then it would have finally climbed up so i have really instant cranks especially since it sat overnight my fuel pressure regulator is good my fuel pump control module is good my injectors appear to be good because i can punch it all day long and not have any issues with power all the way up to 7000 rpm as long as i'm not asking for that particular rev band which is two to four thousand rpm and from what i've read the low pressure fuel pump is a major contributor there or your low pressure sensor on your fuel rail could be going bad as well. I could just throw parts at this car right now, like I could do it myself. I could do the fuel pump for 160, 170 bucks, get a good one or maybe even go to a wall bro, something that could be future proof if I want to add some more power. Or I can get the low pressure fuel sensor for like, it's a temperature and a pressure sensor for 40 bucks and uh, you know, 200 bucks throw a couple parts at it see what happens and that's it but i figured let me thoroughly try to diagnose this and bring you guys along for the ride this could be a one-stop shop video for fueling issues with your 335i and where to go if you're having issues based on what i described in this video so i'm doing things a little bit differently here i can connect my laptop and go into impa and download the soft and hard codes and whatnot but it's in german etc it takes some time to load up the laptop i have a tablet i have mhd flasher i bought the monitoring add-on when i was uh data logging to see how much of an improvement my ebay intercooler did so why don't we use that to actually read codes data log monitor fuel pressure at the actual sensor underneath the intake manifold etc to determine what part to buy right now um, and we'll talk about it once once we get there but for now let's look at the codes stored in the DME I have my OTG cable and I have my uh, connection from the car so what I'm gonna do is go into MHD fl flasher and we're gonna go into codes and we're gonna read the DME codes So now, I have a 29E1, that's a, that's actual a hard code um, that I believe would always be there, but because of my custom tune, I never get a check engine light, I believe. It could be related to catalyst in inefficiency, um, but it's, uh, I actually went into INPA, it's, I did this outside the video, and I'll insert a clip here. So I looked that up, 29E1, uh, I don't think it's related here, um, 
because it was at 768 RPM. As you can see, I describe it describes the RPM and RP and uh, mileage on the car when I got that code. It was at idle, and it was just an anomaly. It was a lean code, etc. I'm not going to overthink that. It, I actually just recently cleaned my um, uh, intake valves and reset the computer after that. For all I know, it could have been just when I first drove it around after that. It was a little while ago, so I'm not focusing on that code. It could either be my custom tune or whatnot. So we'll, we'll leave that out of the equation here. And these uh, shadow codes, catalyst converter conversion, blah, blah, blah. That is related to my catalyst downpipes. We're not going to focus in on that. Uh, torque request via can plausibility and fuel pump plausibility. That could tell us something. I, so the fuel pump plausibility to AAF that's pretty much leaning toward the low pressure fuel pump having an issue but it's not uh, a hard code um, so that's interesting um, and that's what we're gonna dig further in on at least it's there it says something's up with the fuel pump it's not really holding up what we gotta figure out now is it the sensor underneath the intake manifold or is it the actual fuel pump itself and then the torque request via can I'm not sure what that means. I'll look it up, but maybe it's saying that the amount of torque being produced at a given RPM was off. I'll look up these codes. So, next step is going to be, I bought the monitoring add-on, okay? And options. So I have these uh, values that I can monitor, and I can throw it into uh, an Excel file from the software. My goal is to actually data log the car and plot what the actual pressure is at the low side of the high pressure fuel pump so the input to the high pressure fuel pump where the sensor is we want to see where the pressure goes does it dip down hard when you uh, accelerate uh, at two or three thousand rpm more than 50 percent do i see a big dip in the line or in the graph if so then the fuel pump's not keeping up or does it flat line completely go completely steady to a value that doesn't make sense that with zero fluctuation because it's it's bad basically that's another possibility so we're gonna go for a drive after this i'm gonna make sure i have the appropriate monitors set here so that we can actually uh, get the appropriate data off the car and look at it on the computer after so uh, I'm going to go into monitor auto logging. As soon as I press the accelerator more than about 50%, it's going to start to log. And um, in terms of uh, options, I did find the one that I want. Fuel low pressure sensor right there. Fuel low pressure sensor. That's activated. So that will be part of my graph. Um, and we can actually um, monitor what happens with the fuel pressure at the sensor and determine if I need to buy a fuel pressure sensor or um, a fuel pump. I'm just on the back road right now just to demonstrate I'll put it in first gear at about 20 and we'll punch it. I'm able to go right up to Accelerate no problem there. I to put it down into second gear. Let's go to about 2,000 RPM. You can't probably tell, but I feel it. There's a hesitation. It wouldn't be obvious uh, just by watching the camera, but it should pick up quicker than that. I definitely got the hesitation and uh, jerkiness, but you know, the car's powerful enough that it can rip through that spot and kind of start to pick up where it left off at around 4,500 RPM or so. But it's just a shudder or a hesitation and it just doesn't feel right. And uh, I think I kind of already know what the problem is. I've been monitoring the, the actual uh, low pressure fuel sensor and it sometimes drops to 55.6. But 99% of the time it stays at 55.7 and it's not supposed to do that, it's supposed to vary it somewhat. 
So the fact that it's pegged at a steady value and it's not changing high or low, not even by like a couple of points, would indicate uh, a bad fuel pressure sensor, a low fuel pressure sensor. It's just stuck at one value. So as you can see, it's always at 55.7. The lowest rating was 55.5. The highest rating was 55.7. It stays there no matter what the situation. Cars running, revving it up. It doesn't make a difference. So, from what I've read, if you have a bad fuel pump, um, when you're pushing it, you'll notice that the value drops significantly. Can't, the fuel pump can't keep up with uh, demand. And um, no matter what you do, uh, you know, you'll get a hesitation because you're low on fuel delivery. Um, but in, in my case here, uh, it just stays, you know, fluctuates between 55.5 and 55.7 randomly. Car's not even on right now. That doesn't make any sense. So that would indicate it's a bad uh, sensor. That's what you look out for when you want to figure out if it's the low pressure pump itself or the sensor um, is when it, uh, it just stays pegged at one value no matter what. And that would have uh, activated that code for plausibility because, you know, there's no way if your fuel pump's failing, it's just going a sign of failing isn't it to stay at one exact value and, and hold there the whole time no matter what. You would expect it to go up to 70 PSI under hard acceleration and drop back down to, I don't, I'm not sure, I'll have to look up the values, but I believe somewhere in the 50s. And then when you're under load, if the fuel pump can't keep up, you'll, you'll drop even probably below 50 into the 30s, maybe right down into the 20s, etc. So not to say that the fuel pump isn't potentially going, but I doubt it. And we can't confirm until we change the actual fuel pressure sensor. Just for some quick confirmation here, this uh, yellow line over here is the actual um, low pressure PSI, as you can see. And it's just pegged 55.7 no matter what at all times. As soon as you turn on the key, start the car, you get 55.5 to 55.7, but pretty much stays at 55.7 the entire time. So what we're going to do now is order up a fuel pressure sensor and install it and see how things change and also reset the adaptations uh, via IMPA after changing the sensor so that uh, the car can relearn and we'll expect to see some fluctuation at least a few PSI here and there in the actual uh, fuel pressure sensor value and um, I believe the car would target 72 PSI I have to start here I gotta get some realistic values in terms of the low pressure sensor reading it has to make some sense and then if it seems to fluctuate and seems to respond as you would expect then we could see after resetting adaptations does uh, the car target 72 psi uh, is, is it able to do so is the car uh, indicating a healthy fuel pump maybe we'll find that the fuel pump is struggling and we wouldn't have been able to tell unless the sensor is working properly but first step for sure is the low pressure sensor so that's going to be the end of this video. This is part one. I already actually have a sensor on order. I kind of anticipated this. So I'm going to change that out and we'll make a part two and re-log and check things out to see how the car responds.